So this has just arrived. Liz has this uh, Liz has this exact clock model of clock in her room at the hospital and I quite like it and I need a clock for my office wall so I found this. So you can cycle through and show different information. When I turned it on just now uh, it defaulted to this but I like to have as much information displayed as possible. So Saturday afternoon, 2.05 p.m., 10th of August, 2024. And then, look, I'm able to change the colors. So I've yet to decide which one I like. Uh, what else do we have? What does this one do? Oh, that just kind of, right, so. I can kind of like, yeah, so all these buttons, there's like a remote control here. Um, so I can just turn it off or on, obviously. I think these buttons just cycle through colour schemes, if I'm honest with you. But I'm just checking out the manual. Right, there's a menu option. Press the menu button. Where's the menu button? Oh, on the actual clock itself. So there's buttons on there. So, uh, yeah, I'm just going to have a little bit of a play around and uh, see what's cool. <laughs> so with the menu option, you're able to set the language. You're able to set the time. Uh, I've got it on uh, 24 hour, of course, or military time, as it says in the manual. Date, day, month, year, or if you're one of those weird Americans, month, day, year, daylight saving, time cycles, uh, brightness. So let's go back to time cycles. So not quite sure. Ah, there we go. Start time morning. Oh, I see. This is when it switches on in the morning. Right, so we don't want it really on before... So 8 o'clock is when my working day starts. And I'm not going to do it. So I don't really want it on before 8 o'clock because I'm not really down here before 8 o'clock. And then night will start at 2100 which is fine if I can just uh... okay right uh, and then basically you can set the brightness so we'll have it 100% during the day and then at night we can have it at 20% that seems fine Alarm, so you can set alarms. So you've got alarm duration, alarm sound, uh, volume. You can set it to wake you up. You can tell it to drink some water. Uh, morning medication, drink some water. Afternoon medication, drink some water. Evening medication, drink some water. Night medication, appointments. You can put custom reminders. There's even a USB at the back where you can basically um, tell it uh, sort of set your own reminders. You can import your own reminders from a USB. So that's quite cool. So really, Saturday afternoon, so what do we have? I... Saturday afternoon, 14.10 with a sun, 10th of August, 2024. Saturday, 14.00, you see I want, Saturday, 14, Saturday, oh yeah. Saturday afternoon, 14.10. I think, I think that's, that's definitely what we want because we've got the day, the time of the day, the actual time, the weather and the date. And then really, I think it's just a case of what colours do I like? I mean, um, so in Liz's room at the hospital, uh, she has that red, white and blue, which is fine, but it does remind me a bit of the French flag. Uh, which I'm a little bit averse to, obviously. 
But, I mean, it's colourful. It's colourful, right? Um, hmm. What to do? Let's leave it as that for the minute. And uh, we'll see how it goes on. We can always change it every day, can't we? Yeah. Hey everyone. Another episode of Total Ramblings. It's Tuesday the 13th of August 2024 and a bit of a solemn day for me today because on Tuesday the 13th of August 1974 my dad was in a car crash uh, at the junction of Bembridge Crescent and Bembridge Road, something like that, in South Sea, um, which he later died from. That's 50 years ago today, on a Tuesday. And I have to wonder, I'm, I'm out here, it's a glorious day, beautiful sunshine, and I have to wonder, was it like this on that day? Was he just having a nice drive? suddenly he's got serious multiple injuries and he's in hospital. So I was a little bit loath to leave the house today but I am going to see Liz. I think I've got to go and pick up Anthony. So Best go and do that first. Uh, today, during my lunch break, I had a visit from a social worker. So on Friday, we've got this big meeting, two hour meeting over Teams to talk about Liz's continuing needs funding for care etc and essentially there'll be her healthcare representatives me her and this social worker guy representing the council on the phone and um, as far as I can make out it's basically uh, a bun fight between deciding who pays for her care is it health continuing or is it the local council because the local council have certain legal obligations towards people who can't properly look after themselves but also health might have a, a responsibility to people with more serious conditions so essentially we are going to be going through this massive long checklist um, with people chipping in uh, identifying what she does doesn't need etc um, and then at the end of it I guess somebody makes a decision as to who's paying for it um, it's possible we might, we might have to end up paying for some of it so you know who knows so anyway I had a very nice chat with him um, went through the whole history of what's happened with Liz showed him the video of when Liz came home so he's got an idea of what she's able to do uh, he was asking me what her sort of what would a perfect day be like for her that kind of thing um, that sort of thing really uh, just getting an understanding of the situation and um, yeah so we'll see him again Friday uh, well I won't see him but I'll be on the call Friday um, That's it really. Um, so this afternoon, this evening, when I'm with Liz, we're probably going to have to ring the DVLA, see if she's allowed to drive or share her medical condition. And we're probably going to have to ring Ford Credit and offload her car because her mum doesn't want it. She keeps changing her mind, but she now says she doesn't want it. Uh, I'm afraid I can't really afford to keep paying for it. It's sitting there doing nothing. 
don't need two cars. If Liz can't be left alone, then she certainly can't go out for a drive on her own. And if she was to have an incident while driving, that would just be awful. So if she can't be on her own when driving, that means she'll have to be with somebody else, in which case she might as well, they might as well be the driver. Um, Alice only wants to drive an automatic, so um, no good for her. So there you go. It's a lovely car. It's got 3,064 miles on the clock. This is tragic, really. Best car Liz has ever had. It's a lot, I love it. It's really nice to drive. Also, we looked into uh, we looked at the rules for motability. Uh, so Anthony is entitled to a motability car already because he gets PIP personal independence payments. Uh, Liz might get PIP and might be entitled to a motability car. Uh, and I was thinking, I was just thinking out loud, hey, we could get rid of both cars, get a motability car, and then I wouldn't need to be paying any money towards the car because this costs me about £400 a month, plus insurance, plus fuel, plus tax, etc., etc. However, of course, and it's quite fair, the motability car needs to be used for the benefit of the patient. I wouldn't be able to use it to drive to work. Now, there's two aspects here. Firstly, you could argue that me having a job is ultimately benefiting the patient because I'm bringing money in. Secondly, you could say, actually, I'm not going to need it for work anyway because I'm going to be if I stay with my current client, who is based in London, I'm certainly not driving into London. I'm going to be taking the train into London. So I could just get taxis to and from the train station. Um, therefore, I wouldn't need to use the car for work. So anyway, it's something we've got to consider. But essentially, I don't think we'd get away with having a motability car and me using it without the patient being present. I think that would be taking the piss be like so Liz has also applied for a blue badge disabled badge it would be a bit like me putting the disabled badge in the car right now when Liz isn't in it you know you're not allowed to use a disabled badge unless the disabled person is in the car and they are planning on getting out of the car so that is the uh, situation there so um, anyway so yeah, probably have to make a phone call. And so essentially, because um, I visited the garage on the Saturday, the dealer on Saturday, Liz's car is on a lease, personal finance thingy bob. And we're quite early into it. And because of that, we're currently in a negative equity situation. Uh, usually about two years in, certainly by the end of the agreement, you end up in a positive equity situation. And that kind of bears fruit because Liz, normally when she has a car, after about two years, she starts getting phone calls saying, hey, do you want to sell your car? Um, so basically the situation at the moment is if we were to sell Liz's car to the dealer, we would have to fork up a shortfall of about £1,700. However, if we are very nice to the Ford Credit people and explain the position to them, um, they might let us off that because of extenuating circumstances. We just don't know. So that's one of the phone calls I've got to make when I get there. So I've got to tell her all about this visit today, all about what's happening Friday. We've got to try Ford Credit and or the DVLA. So we've got quite a bit to do. Anyway, that's it, I think, for now. Hey, so it's the evening now. It's about quarter past 11 at night. Um, just cooking a very late tea and then I should be going to bed, ready for work tomorrow. I think I'm in London Thursday, although I haven't actually had the invite yet, so I'm not really quite 100% sure. 
Um, but on the basis that I think I might be going to London, I think I'm going to see Liz tomorrow, Wednesday. Anyway, yeah. Just like to keep you appraised of my diary, you know? Excuse me. Liz ended up speaking with a social worker for about 40 minutes in the end. He rang her and basically just told her what he's told me and what I told you earlier. So let's see what happens on Friday. Um, we managed to get hold of the DVLA, the Driver and Vehicle Licensing uh, Association Centre. No, because that's DVLC. Anyway, basically, um, mild tongue dystrophy is a reportable illness as far as a driving licence is concerned. They're sending us some medical forms, but it's looking like Liz might have to surrender her driving license. Now, if that's the case, then obviously any decisions about the car, well, that's the decision made, right? As it is, every time I get to Liz at the hospital, I ring Ford Credit and they've closed. <sighs> so I'm gonna have to try and call them maybe tomorrow and then maybe dial in Liz on a conference call because they're not going to want to speak to me, but I'm going to need to explain the situation. Um, essentially, um, Liz's car needs to go, unfortunately. Like I say, it's a lovely car. I don't want it to go, but we don't need two cars. So, um, yeah, that's just like a final update for the day. I'm very tired. Ooh, I've had a very busy day running around making sure the tracking's working properly because I appear to be slowly sinking down in the frame which is weird anyway um, is that better? at least you don't see my double chin so much quadruple chin hey look subscribe please uh, anyway, I think that's enough for me for now. Short episode of Total Ramblings. Um, going to go now and cook food and eat and sort out this video. Bye-bye. If you enjoy what I do here, although I can't think why, please remember to click the like button, smash that subscribe button, and hit the bell icon to be notified whenever I post a new video. You might also want to check out my website, www.worldsbestestpoet.com, if you fancy a laugh.